Hello, welcome everyone. Hello. Come on in. <laughs> Get yourselves set up, ladies. I'm just going to wait for everyone to come in. Um, we are recording, so uh, just so you are aware. So. Hello. Hello. How are you? <laughs> you look very How are you? <laughs> Beautiful. You having a lunchtime lay down, Ruby? Um, no, I don't really have lunch. Oh. I have a late breakfast and, yeah, kind of that's it. <laughs> and back to work. Right. I'll kick off it um, in two minutes. Okay, one more minute. Hello. Alrighty, we'll kick off. There are still people coming in, so I'll be doing all that at the same time. But welcome, everybody. It's so great to uh, to see everyone um, and to be part of this program. I'm really excited about it. Uh, my name's Sam Truddles, and I'll be taking you through a process over the next hour and a half, um, which hopefully is a bit of fun um, and is your session. So definitely sing out if you've got questions. I'm going to make it pretty interactive. So we'll um, go into some breakout rooms and whatnot as we go through. So um, I'll start off with an acknowledgement of the country that I live on. I'm on Gadigal and Wongal people's land, which is in the inner west of Sydney. Uh, I love where I live and work. It's such a beautiful um, location. Um, I'm in Roselle and um, every day I get to, to walk around and see um, what has been um, um, take it well, taken well care of for me to enjoy uh, over the millions of years. And um, yeah, it's just so, so beautiful and I'm grateful for those who have taken good care of it and I try to do the same. Um, so uh, today we're going to step through um, communicating with influence and hopefully um, find ways that, that can sort of sharpen your skills in this so it's not something that you feel um, is blind to you. I am a negotiator. Um, my background is um, I spent 20 years in corporate roles and then um, left there and ended up um, running my own business, which is what I do now. Um, I uh, was um, head of sponsorship for Telstra was my last corporate gig. So I've worked on sponsorship deals, um, you name it, I've done it. So AFL, NRL, Ballet, Netball, Crab Fest, WA. I've done sponsor deals with, with players and, and artists and whatnot um, and, and worked across a whole gamut of different things in, in that space, which was a great privilege. I also got to spend lots of people's other people's money, which was fun. Um, since leaving there, I set up my own practice, which is the other side of the table, and we focus on helping people learn to negotiate with confidence. Um, now, I was not always a confident negotiator. I grew up in, an, in the generation of seen and not heard, so children were not allowed to speak in front of adults because the adults knew better. 
Um, I would be frightened to answer the telephone because I didn't know what to say to people that were on the other end of that line. Um, I carried the chip and dip bowl around at barbecues. So if this is resonating with you, uh, have hope that you can become a good negotiator as well. Um, I also didn't really, uh, I, I sort of grew up in that time where even in, in my career, I didn't really feel like I could speak up. So now I'm a champion for it's just somebody who's not on mute. Um, I'm a champion for helping people to understand that saying what you, you know, articulating what you what you have to bring to the table, it really doesn't matter how old you are. If it's a good idea, it's a good idea. If it's a great question, it's really important that it be shared. Um, the problem we have is when people don't ask good questions and then bad things happen. So, and then we sit back and go, yeah, I kind of knew that. It's like, well, I, how do we get the confidence that we can lean forward first um, and ask the questions and, and build an environment where people are actually feeling comfortable to do that? Um, so um, I've got a few slides to share. Um, let me just try to do a couple of things, so bear with me. Um, right, so, so uh, I've done that. Um, so yeah, I'm going to define what we're looking at here. What is um, communicating with influence? moving slides around. Um, shifting your mindset towards negotiating, which is really what um, negotiate. Uh, uh, communicating with influence is and then creating a game, game plan to help you build your confidence um, at the end we'll also have time for q a and as i said we'll do some breakout sessions as we go through as well so it's a bit fun um so other things about me uh just briefly so i have written a couple of books on negotiating um and one of them was recognized last year as a great book apparently uh, which was very very exciting um i believe everyone can be a good negotiator which is what i sort of why i'm here today i've i've done a lot of work with the AIS um, over the last few years. I work with, um, you know, the Women in Leaders program, which is so special to me. I also work with women in media, women in um, music and various other aspects. And it's one of my favourite things to, to help people understand, wow, I'm actually pretty good at negotiating already. Um, and so building on that as a base. So that's my, um, you know, really my, my joy of being involved in these programs. So, um, as I said, it's not always that way. So if you are currently um, not a lover of negotiating or feeling confident to, to voice yourself, it's, you know, it, please take it from me that there is the ability to evolve and that anybody can do this. I mean, my, this obviously a photo of my mum and dad. Um, they, my mum jokes often that I had to become a good negotiator because I was so cheeky when I was a teenager that I had to get out of trouble. So, <laughs> um, and, and it has probably rung true my whole life. I am a challenge your brand and um, have got myself into some tricky situations but it's been it's been fun and um, learning from great people has been how I've survived through my my career <clears throat> so what I'd like you to do is drop it in the chat um, what's the one word that you use to describe negotiating it was part of the pre-work for anybody had a chance to do that um, just and if you haven't done the pre-work that's no problem it just um, what's the one word that jumps to your mind right now so we want to look at what generally people are thinking compromise yeah that's win -win. That's uh, okay discussion deal nice excellent not all negative words it's great yep. deals 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 win 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 <laughs> lots of winning listening very nice listening's a beautiful word um discussion challenging oh good curiosity yay that's one of my favorite words excellent agreement compelling yeah, beautiful words. Thank you, ladies. That's great. Yeah, it's really interesting. Oh, manipulation. Ouch. Um, I didn't see the word. It's awesome and I love it. It's so much fun. <laughs> None of those words really came up, but that's understandable. Um, yeah, so I, um, what I'd like you to do is take a moment to reflect. And you can do this over the next couple of days if you like, um, but it's really important to think about, okay, well, hang on a minute. Where did that come from? Because um, we think negotiating and often people say to me, oh, I hate it. I, I think it's going to be a fight. Um, I don't want to, you know, I, I don't like confrontation, so I don't negotiate. And it's like, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, if you're fighting, you're not negotiating anymore. So so really want to see, okay, did something happen? And if it did, that's valid. But we need to create new um, memories, as it were, to to build on to say, okay, well, actually, where's the where's the evidence that says that negotiating is um, is not fun, not um, something to to embrace, and, and particularly when it's a word that is. Um, 
it, when you feel like I don't love it. So, um, you know, uh, and you, if your behavior is that you are avoiding it. So try and make sure that you're really clear on, oh, have I actually explored how I feel about negotiating, which I'll step into why we probably, lots of us haven't done that in a minute. Um, first of all, I wanted to talk about well, what is uh, what is uh, communicating with influence? And so for me, I'm a bit of a word nerd. So for me, I always go to the definitions of things. So first of all, let's have a look at, well, what is um, what is communicating, which hopefully most of us do understand what that word is, um, but just to in the context of this. So imparting or exchange, uh, imparting or exchanging of information by speaking, writing, or using some other medium. Pretty straightforward, right? Um, and we do that um, in the context of influence. So we're doing that to um, affect or, or change how someone or something develops, behaves or thinks. So, so we're really trying to shift a behaviour here of someone or something. Um, and, and I think that that's where it becomes a little bit different. We're trying to find, well, where's the balance of those two things? And it's really, for me, it's more than a chat um, with your mates. So it's important that we clarify, okay, well, we joke we joke about being analog here if it's important enough for you to use a pen and paper to go analog then that's when we're starting to step into a negotiation we want to have a conversation with somebody that changes the outcome right so why wouldn't we sit down and prepare our thoughts uh, on paper for that or on whatever medium that you like but but really making sure that it's clear that we are sitting down taking some time because this one matters um, oops. So the problem, though, there is a problem with um, with talking about um, negotiating because even the word itself really makes people uncomfortable. In fact, 87% of people are either sometimes or always apprehensive about negotiating. So I guess if you're in that camp, which that's a lot of people, um, then have a think about, okay, how do I um, change that? And one simple way that I know how to change our thoughts about negotiating is change the word. It's just a conversation. It could be a series of conversations that you're going to go and enter into. But if the word negotiating is a trigger for you, then stop using it and go, okay, I'm going to go and have a conversation. That's an important one, but that's one that I'm going to have. And so that should de-escalate that word just as a starting point. Um, so to be clear on how we got here, uh, there are numerous reasons why people don't embrace negotiating or don't like it. And as I mentioned before, it may be um, experience, but there may be some other reasons as well. But generally speaking, I think that there are four key um, reasons why we don't embrace negotiating. And the other one, the first one is something that I'm trying to change. So currently negotiating is not on the school curriculum. Uh, if you did, in fact, learn through a school or have done some training on that, that's awesome. Hopefully your work has, has funded that and it is part of what you're doing. But some of being here today makes me think in the general population uh, you're part of, then no, we didn't learn that at school. So I'd like to have it on the school curriculum um, by 2032 because I think that by being able to be a better negotiator means you're a better communicator, you're a better listener, um, you can solve problems as a collective, um, you can say no when you don't want something, uh, particularly that matters when we're, you know, working with teenagers. Um, and then, you know, if you really want to affect change as an adult, we need to be able to articulate ourselves really clearly. So, so that's re really why I think it's important. And on that, if there's something that you can take from today and impart to your children, um, please do share it with them, help them learn how to articulate themselves. Because often we find that young people are still creative, very creative and, and curious until the age of about eight or nine. And then something happens that they are kind of like, oh, no, they stop that cure in a strong curiosity. So remember, if you've got little kids, they're still probably asking you why every five seconds. So there is a point when they stop doing that. And it's like, oh, be careful. Don't let them stop asking why. It's just asking it in better ways <laughs> and less, you know, using more words. The next reason is that it does cause us anxiety. Um, you know, when something matters to us, it is stressful. And I still get stressed when I'm negotiating. So, so that's probably why people go, well, it's stressful. I don't want to do it. So really, I don't know whether that's a good enough reason not to, um, to, to embrace in more negotiations. Um, so someone's in the waiting room, but I can't. 
let you in because I can't see it. Oh, here we go. There we go. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, okay. So, um, so just have a think about how much, if it's debilitating the, the level of stress and anxiety, then yes, you need to, to find ways to, to, to get some help, whether that's some, taking somebody with you into the room to negotiate, but think about where's the truth. It's, sometimes we get told by people, oh, I don't want to look like I'm ripping somebody off. Are you really trying to rip somebody off? It's probably not true. And you and if they thought that that's what you were thinking, then they probably wouldn't think that of you at all. So, so really think about, go back to that point at the beginning around where's the evidence for you that this is going to go a certain way or that you you know, your, your rationale for not getting involved in negotiating is true. Um, sometimes it just has to happen. Um, the next one is sort of three parts. So um, cultural taboos have a lot to do with stopping us from embracing negotiating. And I've picked the, these three. There are lots of cultural taboos, obviously, in, in this country. But the top three, I think, is um, <clears throat> if you say what you do want, then uh, you're possibly being um, pushy. If you say what you don't want, then you're being difficult. And if you talk about money, well, that's just rude to talk about money. So you shouldn't do that. Um, so for me, I think that those three things, we're kind of screwed if we don't say damn the taboos to that. And they are holding us back right now. So if, if saying what you do want is really important so somebody can understand what, what it is and the reasons why. Saying what you don't want can save a lot of time. So getting to the crux of, oh, I don't want that thing because blah, 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 blah. I'm not trying to be difficult. I'm actually just trying to articulate so you understand my position. And the final one, well, if we don't talk about money ever, then how are we ever going to get ahead? If you run your own business, if you do anything around money um, regularly, you have to talk about money and your worth. So it is really important that we get comfortable talking about money. A sidebar on this is that last year, the Fair Work Ombudsman changed the laws around um, uh, talking about your package um, and you are actually allowed, it is no longer illegal for, for us to um, not, sorry, we are allowed to talk about what's in our packages with our trusted uh, friends and colleagues. So, so check out the, um, the, the act and the policy at your business, but that's really kind of become a game changer for me that um, amongst my friend group, we actually talk about money quite a lot more now that we know that we're not breaching our contracts. So have a think about how often are you comfortable talking about those things, particularly um, money. And the final one is that it, it forces us to have uncomfortable conversations. So, so being able to, um, you know, sit down with somebody and say those things and tell them what you do want and what you don't want, um, it, it can be uncomfortable from time to time. And I can appreciate why people don't embrace it. But uh, it sucks being an adult, but that's what we have to do is that it's time for us to be the ones that have those conversations. I sometimes look and, and be sitting in conversation going, oh, I'm, I'm the one who has to solve that situation. I am officially the grown up now and I'm still in denial uh, at my age, but, but really it's that point where it's like, okay, yeah, I am the one that everybody's looking to now. So I will get more involved in more negotiations. Um, so then um, part of the pre-work as well was looking at where people are at. So hopefully people had a chance to do the pro negotiator profile. If you haven't, there's a link in the stuff that has been sent through to you already. Um, but I wanted to talk you through what they are. Um, so, um, um, okay, so there's four profiles. None of them are bad. Uh, just so I started out the way it is, it's where you default to. So it's about you making a conscious decision to say, oh, actually, am I aware of how I'm defaulting as my starting point for negotiations um, and, and making decisions around that as you go through your day and your week. The first profile is an avoider. So for me, in my life, this is, was my mother. Um, it didn't matter where we were, didn't matter what it was. She did not want to be part of negotiating. So um, even in Bingley and JB Hi-Fi, where it says, we negotiate for cash on the wall, she'd be like, no, 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 don't. No, please don't, please don't. Um, now, that was because in her generation, it was weird. she didn't want to look like she needed the money and she has all barriers, had all barriers around, you know, the need and the want and what it looks like. So, so have a think about if that's you. I think avoiders, I don't, I doubt there's anyone on this call that is an avoider as a as a wholesale. Uh, it may be in different parts of your life that that happens, but oftentimes it's not really a, a def default for people who are um, working in teams and, and, and um, 
well, have been part of a team in any capacity as a sports person. So I think hopefully that's um, not your default too often. The next one is around being a dabbler. So the bulk, that 87% of people I talked about earlier, the bulk of people are sitting in dabbler space. And there's no harm in that. It's just one of the things that there's the greatest potential if you are a dabbler. So dabblers tend to think, right, okay, today I'm going to ask for that thing. I'm going to go to JB Hi-Fi and I'm going to ask them for, I've done my research, I'm going to ask them for a different price on the refrigerator. And then they walk up to the person and they say, oh, okay, is there a possibility that instead of $1,000, I could get it for $985? And then they take a breath, a half a breath, and then they say, oh, oh, no, it's okay. It's all right. No, 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 don't, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. That's okay. And so um, really negotiating with themselves. So often it's about, oh, my gosh, I'm so nervous to ask because I'm, I don't want to offend anybody. So there's a bit of them that's like, oh, gosh, I, I really um, – a, a dabbler can really evolve by building their confidence and being ready for them to say yes, no, or maybe. So I, I think the crux of negotiation comes down to those three words, yes, no, or maybe. And so shifting, um, but it's always good to ask the question, is that your best price? Is that the best thing you can do? Whatever the situation, I do talk a lot about money, but I know money is not always the currency in every situation. So whatever the currency is, for you, it could be time, it could be resourcing, it could be something else. Um, but what we need to be able to do is it's okay to ask. And what happens next is they're going to say yes, no, or maybe. That's a fact. What we need to be ready for is if they say yes, what will I say? If they say no, what will I say? If they say maybe, guess what? What will I say? So being really clear that there is going to be another thing that happens. So having the answer to yes, great. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Um, the answer to no, oh, okay, that's not what I was expecting, but I thought I would ask, fair enough. Um, and maybe, okay, well, what needs to happen for that maybe to get turned into a yes? And that's as simple as it is. You're not offending anybody, you're just asking. Um, so that's, I think, the one key thing that dabblers can really shift their confidence or everybody can shift their confidence by being ready for that second round of questions. The next one is adventurers. Um, so um, adventurers for me, oh, sorry, just on the picture for the last one. So this is my friend Nikki who is, she runs um, epic um, programs in infrastructure and government. And ha however, when I first started working with her, she was not confident to negotiate. She sat in that double space really strongly. She's now my star pupil and doesn't need me anymore, she tells me. So, <laughs> um, and, and that's only been within a year of working together. So, you know, people who are awesome at their job but have a block on negotiating. I see that time and time and time again. So if that's you, you know, again, know, be confident that you can evolve from this if you if you want to. Um, adventure, adventurers, so this was me probably 15, 10, 15 years ago. Um, and when I would, I really, adventurers are great because they will always ask. Um, the, the shift is to find that balance of is this fair and is it reasonable? So a, a lot of times when you're traveling, say you're in Thailand or whatnot, um, they negotiate on the calculator, which is quite fun. Um, but there's definitely a time on the calculator when it starts to be um, unfun for the other person. Because And I have to make a decision as to say, oh, is that person, uh, is this a, a reasonable deal for both parties? Or am I just worrying about myself? Am I getting a killer deal? And this is really important for when we negotiate with the same people over and over again, because we're going to go through this again. So if I push too hard today, am I going to pay for that later? When I'm negotiating with my family, um, am I going to regret that I pushed my sister to do something when she didn't want to necessarily, you know, get do it my way? So, so finding that balance is really important, especially when you're in the adventurous space. So smoothing out the edges. Um, which is really what leads to, to the beautiful end of being a master at it. Now, mastery is usually for people who do this every day. This is where I sit, obviously. If I'm not a master, then I'm in trouble because I get paid to do this. However, it, like any mastery, you are, it is a practice and I don't always get it wrong and I do get stressed from time to time. Well, I do get stressed when it's a deal that really matters, but you never, it's never beautiful and perfect, I'm afraid to tell you. So, um, you know, the other thing is that the, the beauty of mastery is that you move between all four of these personas. So there are days when I may need to deal with an underperforming staff member and I go, you know what, I'm going to avoid that today because I don't have the capacity for that. 
I'm not feeling great about myself, so I'm going to avoid that today. However, I'm going to put it in my diary for Wednesday next week and I'm going to have that conversation because as, as a person who gets stuff done, that's what happens. But if I just keep avoiding it, then that's becoming my default setting and that's not healthy. So, you know, sometimes I don't feel like really getting into a big negotiation. So my dabbler might be, you know, oh, is that is there anything you can do with that price? You know, that my little feeble voice comes out, JB Hi-Fi or, or Harvey Norman. <laughs> and if they say no, I'm not even going to push back again. I'm just going to go, okay, no problem. So I try not to, to step too hard into my adventurer phase because I think that I default to that very strongly. Um, but, you know, just with that reminder of, oh, yeah, I've got to practice every time to go, oh, am I smoothing out my edges? So um, I wanted to ask from the group what profile you are. We've got a little poll here. And if anyone's got a question, then give me a shout at the same time. So the poll is open. Hopefully you can see that now. Yes, yes, yes. Lots of things coming in. Excellent. I'll give it a minute. Oh, lots of dabblers coming in. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Got some adventurers. That's exciting. Okay, we're about halfway through. If you're still voting. Oh, it's going crazy. It's fine. Okay. Well, I might close it there. Excellent. Thank you, ladies. I'll share the results. So 69% are dabblers. So I think that's pretty representative of the people here. Great to see 27% adventurers, um, which is awesome. And then a couple of avoiders. So just being mindful of where you're up to and what's the influence of that. Is that you being an, an avoider today or is that in a general deep? Uh, default setting so so as I mentioned before you can traverse between these ones um, and really thinking about where you are it's not a negative at all where you're up to it's just knowing and it also helps to know when you're negotiating with other people where they might be as well to make decisions on how you're gonna um, how are you going to negotiate like if I know if I'm negotiating with a um, with a avoider then I make my decision on how hard I'm going to go in that obviously I'm not going to go hard because that's not appropriate so <laughs> um so then I guess my next question to follow on from that is how do you feel about that so um do you think that that represents um how you behave in a negotiation so the options there are it's true in certain situations I agree with it or it's spot on. So when you've completed the, the question as well, it will spit out a bit of a, a couple of paragraphs about what it means to you. So if you didn't get that, check your um, junk box. Um, but again, if you haven't done the question, you can do that after this session and you'll get some, um, yeah, it just gives you a little, you know, a bit more detail than I've gone through today um, to, to see where you're up to. Okay, so uh, just keep it open for about five more seconds. Yeah, okay. So interesting. So 58% um, of people saying it's true in certain situations and 37 saying I agree with that, right? So I think that, as I said, all four we traverse. So oftentimes we'll see people say, people will say to me, oh, at home I'm a certain way, at work I'm a certain way, with certain people I'm a certain way. So it rings true. It's just about taking that point to say, okay, well, am I, is that happening consciously for me? Um, or am I actually thinking, mm, I think I not, might want to shift that a little bit. So I'm all about, you know, nobody changes unless we ch decide to change ourselves. So what I think it's all about is just being aware of it. So as you go through the next week, really being conscious of, oh, how am I defaulting? What am I, what, how am I behaving um, when it comes to a, a situation where it's, where it matters? So do, am I speaking up or am I being quiet? Am I, you know, and there words inside my head that I really want outside my mouth. So um, really making that decision as to how you want that to play out ideally. Okay, so we're going to have a breakout session. Uh, controversial image, my team were like, are you serious? <laughs> But uh, it made me laugh. So I just wanted, thought it would be good to um, break out into groups um, and talk about, you know, how does that show up for you? What are the si different situations with such a big group of people saying um, that they um, it's true in certain situations, then in your in your breakout room, have a chat about how it shows up and, um, you know, how, how you... Um, how, how it shows up in different situations. Sorry, trying to do two things at once, not my strength. Um, so I'm just going to set this up and we'll just be in there for a couple of minutes. Maybe, who would I put down there? 
we'll maybe put that down for about um, five minutes so you can have a chat and meet each other as well. Um, let me just create those. There's a couple of rooms with three in them. And I'll um, put you in there for five. All right. Enjoy your chat, ladies. <laughs> Is there a problem here? Hey Jess, is your room not working? No, I'll just um can you pop me in again? Yep, same room or oh there was someone not in there. I'll put you in into a different room. How's that? Because that person hasn't gone in there. See you in a sec. Thank you. Room seven. Yeah, easy. <laughs> by themselves. Hi guys, sorry, I just had to go to the bathroom. I think I just missed what happened. <laughs> <laughs> ah, we were just going into breakout rooms to talk about our profile, Sally. So I will, I probably just moved you out of a room. So hold on one sec. Let me just see where you are. Does it say what room you're supposed to be in? Sorry, there's a lot to name here. No, there we go. Oh yeah, you're, you're, if you should click on it, you should be in room one. Is there a, something on the screen? Um, no. No? Okay. Uh, move it to another room. Hang on. Okay. Yeah, I'll put you in room five. There we go. Oh, yeah, cool. Thank you. Sam, I was the only person in room two. Uh, so yeah. I came back. <laughs> Some people were <laughs> going to the bathroom, so I've just moved a few people around. But, yeah. Um, okay, hold on a second. Oh, you can talk to me. <laughs> Tell me about your negotiated profile. Are you asking me, Sam? Yeah. Yeah, sorry. I saw there was a few other people in here too. So I was like, is that directed at me? <laughs> um, my negotiating profile is a dabbler, and I'd say that's true most of the time except for some situations I'd say I'm a full out, uh, flat out avoider <laughs> yeah, okay <laughs> and then and how does that show up in your world at work at home and, and all around um I'd say I've more when I think about it I think more in just like personal life experiences like your example of going to JB Hi-Fi and trying to negotiate on the price but negotiating more with myself yeah um, I could relate pretty closely to that and then your other ex example was when um like haggling you know overseas when there's no set price on stuff I will usually try and delegate that to one of my like my whoever I'm tra traveling with because it yeah. gives me so much anxiety <laughs> <laughs> oh it gives you anxiety yeah I know it's it can be really stressful I think I used to feel like that too and then I'd let someone do it for me and then I think one day I just must have gone right oh, I'm going to do this and just have a go. And I I watched because I like, you know, as I said before, I like human behavior. So it was really about going, okay, well, what are they doing? And how yeah. and, and I and you know that feeling when it's like I could have said that. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. I think um in other instances, like around here, asking and negotiating, the part I struggle with mostly is when you get the initial no. And then all that initial kind of roadblock. And then I go, oh, this is just too hard. I'm not gonna keep pursuing it like maybe it's not worth my effort so yeah, yeah. it's a challenge 
Yeah, it is. And I think it's about that whole yes, no, maybe. We sort of forget that second round of, oh, gosh, I need to have a response for that. So so perhaps try that and just see, okay, well, if they say no, it's like, okay, my my options are kind of accept that and say, okay, no problem, I thought I'd ask. Or, oh, could you tell me why it's a no? Could you give me a bit more or what would, you know, if that kind of falls into that maybe territory of, oh, well, what needs to happen to change it? And I think that happens a lot in the workplace or, or in a team environment as well. It's kind of like, well, why was that the flat out no? Um, and yeah, it's one of those things where you just go, okay, well, what's a reasonable question to ask mm. next after the no? Mm. Approaching it with like more curiosity. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 exactly. I think that's, and then when you're, when you're not saying, well, I, I learned one of the things I did learn was when I was younger, learning to move from, uh, avoid a, uh, sorry, um, moving from uh, adventurer to master was about uh, the way I asked the question, why? Because when I used to just say, well, why is it like that? <laughs> oh, okay. That's not a good way to say why. <laughs> yeah. And so really just saying, well, can you please explain to me, like, how did we get from here, from there? To here? Why has it ended up this way? So, yeah, I think there's that curiosity component, you know, I was talking earlier about kids. Somehow that gets beaten out of young people, uh, metaphorically. Yeah. And so, and, and as adults, how often do we feel like we can ask okay. that? So, yeah, just try, trying to find ways that you can ask those questions. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh, lovely to chat to you. Okay. okay, welcome back. I think we've got everybody back. Thank you. Um, all right, I might just get everyone to make sure you're back on you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Excellent. Well, how, hopefully everybody went well. Does anybody want to share how they went in their in their room? What they weren't found out a bit about each other? Nobody. Jess, how'd you go? Oh, we can't hear you. No, one well, lost your audio there, Jess. We'll just let you sort that out. Natalie? So I spoke with Fiona. We were basically saying that because we're both dabblers, um, that like when we go into a negotiation or a conversation, the I find it the best to go in and, you know, ask for what you want but have a very clear explanation of why you're asking for what you're asking for. Um, and then I found, I guess, in experience, if you go in with that honesty, that even if the answer that comes back is a no, they tend to sort of be a bit more open as to where their no is coming from, um, which gives a, a nice base to sort of then work from. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's good. I think one one of the things that we we don't like coming out of a negotiation or an important conversation is a not being heard um, and b um, n not being able to articulate all the things we want to articulate. And that's when we come back going, I should have said this, I could have said that. And so doing exactly what you say then, Natalie, is having that plan to go in. It's it's forcing a conversation, and maybe we won't get through all of it right now, but it opens the door for okay, well maybe we need to have another conversation with, about this. Um, to, to unpack the why or the why not. So, yeah, I think that's one of the biggest, most empowering things is to be able to to crack open a conversation that, oh, you know, no one's good at this. Nobody went, well, very few people learned this in school or some other type of education. So we're, we're coming from a bit of a low base. So if you're if you're in, you know, taking control of the situation, then that's great because it means that you're getting coming out of it going, well, I didn't necessarily got what I, get what I wanted, but I know that I said everything I wanted to say and I've got clarity and there's going to be either another conversation or I'm going to take another action than I was before I stepped away from, stepped into there beautiful anybody else want to share I'm happy I'm to share, share. Oh, Sorry, go you go <laughs> Abby is it uh yeah okay cool thank you um it was interesting in our group of three, we were all kind of on different spectrums of it, but the one commonality is we all were willing to go for bat for our clients. So no issue getting things across the line in a work context, but when it came to our own negotiation for money or whatever have you, we all 
failed miserably, <laughs> or I should say there is lots of room for improvement <laughs> to put a positive spin on it. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. And there's, and one more element, I guess, to add from my own personal thing is 10 or so years ago, I became a mother. So even more so I make all these sacrifices. I accept so much less money situations, mm -hmm. whatever, because I'm so grateful to have a job that somehow fits in with being a mother and having a family. So I mm -hmm. find myself taking a big step back in what I'm willing to accept that I pre-children would not have yeah and I think that that's that's something to really focus on it's, um there's, there's a lot in this that sounds like that was a good discussion so I, it's probably a couple of things to pick up on there is one is being clear about what you will and, and you won't stand for where are your boundaries and doing that in your preparation so that you don't have to accept just what comes along and you know part of that is is knowing getting the research you know you shouldn't be great just grateful it's not fair um you know you you get you get a role because you're awesome at it so you know back yourself um and, and find the evidence that helps build your confidence there um and i think the other thing is what would you tell your best friend to do so if you know we're so good at going into bat for other people um and, and just turn that m uh, mirror on yourself and go actually you know if she or he was going into it i'd say you know i do this 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 and this and it's like okay we'll do it for you you're worth it so we all also had um sort of parents that were in their 70s and so there was a little bit of a generational thing where you were taught certain messaging as in you know growing up about not to demand too much like some of the things you chatted on earlier sam percent yeah we just yeah. need to damn those taboos and it's yeah. a different time now it's not disrespecting them it's actually just saying it's a different time now and it's like that's been great thanks very much for your advice i appreciate it and then, you know, they feel heard and then we move on to going, doing it the way that we want as well. So, and yeah. acknowledging some of our male counterparts would have no issue asking for the same thing, despite the generation. There is. That's all I have to say. <laughs> yeah. fair, fair play. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Sorry. Who was going to say something before? It says iPhone on your name. So sorry. I'm sure that's. Oh, right. sorry. <laughs> uh, my name is Marcia. Um, it was funny because Steph and I were in one room and uh, we found out that we're in the same department, but in different states states so working so that's that was a good good start of the conversation and we were totally opposite she's a doubler i'm a adventurer probably um and we chatted about like just not being attached to the outcome yeah because if you're not attached to the outcome um you can start the conversation very open and you actually hear each other a lot better yeah beautiful yeah that's really good and i think that's it and setting it up that way as well this is a conversation and um, we'll see you know we need to be listening to one another I think often what happens in meetings spe specifically excuse me um is the the volume goes up and when I, I look for that because I'm like ah, oh, if the volume's gone up it's because we're not listening to each other anymore or we're not feeling like we're being heard so so circuit breakers are important about making the time to actually go hang on how do I wind this back how do I um, de-escalate the situation and it can be hey look maybe it's time for a cup of tea uh, or maybe we need to reconvene in you know 10 minutes time or someone asking for a bas bathroom break it's all those things that we, we sort of feel like oh we can't really do that can we it's like yeah we can and we should because it's genius what happens when you wash your hands like I don't know what happens there but I come up with all sorts of different outcomes when I go oh I just had that moment of clarity and my brain had the capacity to breathe so so really using some little tactics um when you do feel that people are not listening to one another and it is going off track you and, know, and being not attached to the outcome you can understand what they're actually looking for and where you can fill in the gap but and if that doesn't work then you can just say no what you're we were saying before yeah that's right then you'll have to find another deal yeah yep no thank you it's a beautiful sentence so yeah exactly. no okay beautiful <laughs> thanks ladies i'm glad you found that useful um okay so um what i wanted to do was actually um <clears throat> for some people they there's a need to shift their mindset so what i wanted to step through was a little bit about why uh, if if we're challenged by negotiating then you know what should we be leaning towards so most people will have heard this term about win-win so put your hands up if you've heard of win-win most people yeah yeah, yeah. it's an awesome marketing campaign okay keep your hand up if you know and are clear about what seeking a win-win means yeah, not many people. Yeah, cool. Okay, so we've got a couple of challenges here um, with um, the term win-win. <laughs> so we are a competitive nation and winning, the first thing we think about when we think of winning is 
probably if you're off mute, you'd say losing. <laughs> so it's, it, that's the, the thing that we think about is not coming second. <laughs> so oftentimes what happens is when we go into it thinking it's about winning something, we go into it with that fight, flight or freeze mentality. We're into it going, right, I'm going there. I'm going to get the win. You know, I'm competitive and I, and I love winning. And everyone on this call knows it more about winning than I'll ever know. So, so it's really a default negative for us. It puts us in the back foot. So the, the fight, obviously, I'm going to go and have a fight. So de-escalate that. I'm actually going to go there and have a conversation flight it's like oh shit it hasn't gone the way i wanted to i better get out of here i don't know what to do and freeze is when you're like oh my god that person just said that thing to me and i don't know what to say next because i just can't believe it so you know that this our our lizard brain cannot help us in this situation so so really trying to think about okay well if win-win's not helping us then what should we be looking at and i believe that a good negotiation ends with a fair and reasonable exchange in value so i spent hours days on these particular words as to what that we should be seeking instead so i really think when we're coming together to have a conversation we're actually standing there going oh is that fair do i think it's fair does the research that i have done show to me that that is fair what that person is putting across the table um, and what is what i'm asking for reasonable or would somebody in my position think that's reasonable so it really is pushing it back to, okay, what do you want and how did you value that? What do I want and how did I value that? And is that fair? So when we come together to have a conversation, it's about saying, oh, you think that this bottle is, I don't know, $38. And I think this bottle is about four bucks. And it's like, okay, well, clearly I need to ask some more questions because you just didn't put a $38 price tag on that for no reason. So I didn't realize that the lid is actually solid silver. Not that it's colored silver, but anyway, it's white. Play along. <laughs> but being curious is just so important because otherwise I would just think 38 bucks, that's totally ridiculous. That is completely unreasonable. So we need to be able to say, get to the point where it's like, okay, well, I think that's fair. If that's got a gold, a silver cap, then okay, cool. I'll need to go away and find out some more information, do some more research to know whether that is actually a fair and reasonable exchange in value. So I've really simplified it there, but you can hopefully put this into different contexts. So as you go through the next um, you know, week, every time you step into a situation, is that a fair? Is what that person putting forward fair or reasonable? Am I being fair and reasonable? You know, often we start, we think, oh, we don't want to ask for that because it might be it might be being rude. Well, actually, is it, or is it just fair that you would put that forward and ask that question or or give that valuation to something? So, so really thinking about it instead of a win. I, I mean, I struggle with win win because it's it again. It's one of those things where I've never walked away with everything I want. <laughs> Yes, I can be successful and I can have a win, but I'm not going in to get a win-win outcome. I'm actually going in to act to, with a curious mindset and going to see if it's fair and reasonable to exchange whatever my currency is in terms of the value. Okay, so moving on from there. Oh, hold on, let me move this screen over here. So considering your current approach to negotiating, so drop it in the chat. Um, what are the things that you're negotiating regularly? Is it with particular people? Is it with people at little people, um, people in work, people at home? Um, yeah, what are the different types of things that you are negotiating regularly that come to mind? I'll give you a sec to come into the chat there. Nothing coming to mind, ladies. Oh, here we go. Sorry, it's taking a second. Dates. <laughs> dates in calendars or dates with men? <laughs> <laughs> um, event organizing, yeah, people and their value, sponsorships, compensation, um, yeah, lots of different things. Committee decisions, yeah, really important when you're talking about boards and, and committees, etc. Kids have it's funny, yes, on a daily basis. Um, money is a big thing for fundraising, yep, time funding, yeah. See loads and loads and loads of different things, isn't it? It's interesting. Contracts, yeah. I, feel you i've done lots of those myself so priority tasks um yeah one thing that's not on there i can't say yet is negotiating with ourselves so you know every day uh i don't really use an alarm clock anymore thank goodness but you know there is that whole that noise comes on and it's like oh 
Am I going to do that right now? Am I going to put that off for seven minutes? So, you know, am I going to wear these earrings with this outfit? Am I going to whatever? Am I going to do, you know, those shoes, blah, 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 blah. And then we open the door and then there's little people going, hello, can I have ice cream for breakfast? <laughs> so <laughs> there's just so many different incidents that we are negotiating on a daily basis. So it's great to see so many things in the chat. Um, so what I want you to reflect on is, is your current approach to those negotiations. So do you have a process for preparing for those? negotiations is that working or which part of that is working really well because if you're doing stuff great pat yourself on the back we don't do enough of this um, and then being clear on which part of it could just do with a little bit more work um, and then are you embracing opportunities so uh, you know go back to being conscious negotiator for me it's all about making that decision to see oh are things happening and I'm missing my opportunities to speak up so trying to make sure that okay I'm really really clear uh, I'm, I'm taking those opportunities as they come along um, and, um, and and embracing more of them. So, sorry, just taking the time. Yeah, cool. So again, as you go through the next week, start to see opportunities where, oh, okay, you know, I could say something in that situation. Rather than let Gary say something, I might actually lean forward and go, I had that thought in my head. And instead of it staying in your head, actually say it out loud. Um, because what's the, what's the response gonna be? Yes, no, maybe. So same, same, same. Sorry, a bit of a broken record, but it is important. Okay, so I'm going to do a little poll here. So if you were told in an hour you had to negotiate what you noted in the chat, how confident are you that you would get a great outcome? So think about one, you know, a challenging um, um, negotiation and tell us what your thoughts are. So um, I'd try and avoid it. Hopefully there's not many of those people. Um, I wouldn't feel very confident. I'd be okay with it. Or I'm very confident to go and do that. I'll give you a sec to do that. Oh, no, no one's picked. I'm trying to avoid it. I didn't mean to taint the responses there. <laughs> it's okay if you're going to do that. <laughs> Excellent. I'll just give you five more seconds to do that. Perfect. Okay, interesting. So that findings are that a lot of people would be okay, which is really exciting. So 58% of you would be okay, and um, but 34% said I wouldn't feel very confident. So, um, and 8% are very confident, which is exciting. So um, yeah, so if you're feeling on the end of the scale of I'm not feeling very confident, um, and, and the others, it's just about tweaking it. So what I'm trying to do here is make sure, give you a bit of a framework so that um, it feels more comfortable to, to you. I think a lot of people, we don't actually have a process. Um, so that's one of the things that I really think we need to do. So, so building a game plan really does build your confidence. I see this every day. Uh, Unfortunately, a lot of people's approach to uh, preparation is putting the jug on. So, um, so we talk about don't be like most people. So um, this little meme here was tickled our fancy. So I, it's wild that I, that I consistently enter meetings where I, the only thing I have prepared is, a, is myself a snack. So, um, you know, really thinking about is that actually how you're preparing? Um, you don't need to spend a lot of time on on preparing. We talk about 70% of your effort is in preparing. So, you know, that's your brain capacity, not a, not a stopwatch. We work with um, graziers in the Northern Territory um, and we talk to them about from the from the farmhouse to the gate is enough time for you to have thought about, you know, what it is that you want, what it is you don't want and what they might want. So even if you have put the jug on for a meeting, uh, ahead of a meeting, then sit down, and then go, hang on, think through those three things and go, okay, cool, I'm ready. I'm not stepping into this absolutely blind. Oops, so, oops, where are we up to? So I was gonna do a little activity. I'm traveling, sorry, my time frame. I am staying on time, excellent. Okay, so what I thought we'd do is a little fun game. So um, let's say that you're gonna buy a car and let's say the budget is $15,000, what are the top five things you could do to prepare for that negotiation? So put your hands up if you want to share an idea. Anyone? You're going to go and anyone negotiating a car this week? Yeah, Linda, go for it. I'd probably do some research into the vehicles, where they are available locally, how quickly they can get them, how much they're selling them for. Um, because when you go into a negotiation, if they're going to give it to you cheaper, but you have to wait 12 weeks for it, you need to work out whether that's acceptable 
or whether you need it today and you're going to pay an extra couple of thousand for it. Love it. Beautiful. Thank you, Linda. Excellent. All right. Anyone else? Anyone actually buying a car soon? This would help? Adeline? Um, I was just going to say you could think about things like that you could potentially offer, like if you're prepared to pay cash for the car or, um, you know, the time frame that you're willing to buy, like what that other person was saying, if you're ready to buy it quicker, then that could be something that's beneficial, yep. um, so, you know, working out questions that you could ask around that and having a plan on how you'd answer them. Yep. Excellent. Thank you. Beautiful. Anyone else? No one buying a car. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, have things like how much your insurance would be, how much on-road costs annual would be, sort of work out, is that $15,000 including your first year's bills or is that $15,000 plus so that you sort of know going in what your hard hard top line is? Yeah, awesome. I love it. That's so good. I feel like we've jumped over the important thing of knowing what the purpose we need the car for is. Excellent, Ruth. Love it. Thank you. That's great. Shelley? Yeah, I was just going to suggest any add-ons like, you know, free mats or, you know, roadside service. Yeah, beautiful. That's all good. Yeah, so that's great. So just in, you know, one or two minutes there, we've thought about, okay, cool, here's an, here's an alternative to what they put down and, you know, what could I bring? What could they add to it and different things like that? So it's really important, that, again, to reiterate, you don't need to do a lot of work to, to feel more confident. Um, we had, I had a guy yesterday in a session who he said, oh, yeah, I negotiated a car last week, um, so this session's a week too late. Um, but it was funny because he he's in a preparation. He had a massive spreadsheet and he compared lots of things and whatnot. So it was really interesting for him because he um, had wanted a specific brand and we talked about if you're flexible on the brand, whether it's buying a laptop, buying a fridge, buying a whatever it is, a car, um, if you just wanted an electric vehicle that was awesome, then that's a whole different conversation with a car um, car salesperson. If you go in there saying, I want a Tesla, then you want a Tesla. So there are certain times, it's like buying a wedding dress, buying a, a watch, a pair of shoes, whatever. There's certain times where it's like, okay, I want that specific thing and that's how I'm going to go for it. Um, and to Ruth's point about, you know, knowing what's the purpose of it, you know, is it is it a once in a lifetime thing or is it something that, you know, I, I just want a car that does this function. So, you know, it's really important for us to think through that. So, so hopefully that, you know, shows that how simple it can be to actually go through a process of preparation. So what I'd want to show you is just sort of top line. So often people say to me, oh, shit, I don't really know what I'm supposed to prepare. So I just laid out a, a handful of things for you to think about. You know, just don't have to do all of them, but, you know, step through a simple process. So, so what's your goal? I think that's really, really important to know, okay, well, what is that, that I want from this conversation? Uh, and do I want it from this conversation or do I think it might take a few conversations? So can I break it down? So ultimately my goal, my goal is X, but today I just want to, to solve this one problem. So I've got a contract with a sponsor or, or a, an athlete. Um, I, uh, I know I've got to negotiate the whole contract, but actually today I just want to talk about appearances or one part of that, or I need the legal team in today to talk about, you know, the force majeure or some, you know, horrible clause like that. So, so what am I trying to achieve? So oftentimes, you know, breaking it down into smaller um, uh, approaches really helps. What's your outcome um, from, as I say, from this whole thing um, and from today? Um, to be clear about that, what's where's your evidence? So the research that you've done, if we are buying a car, then have we actually thought, oh, okay, that's interesting. Um, I looked at five different electric cars and these are the comparisons and whatnot. Or um, I've got three other players that I have a contract with and um, the the evidence shows that actually relative to them, you're, you're a bit too high or um, what you're asking for is fair and reasonable, but, you know, and want to add something else. So to having the ability to say yes, no, and maybe, and this is where it comes from. So your yes, no, and maybe is part of your evidence building so that you can articulate it. Because often we get really, um, and it is a stressed, stressful time. So we need to think about, okay, I'm doing this beforehand so that when I step into it, when my emotions are a little bit higher uh, and I am under some tension that I have the things that help me um, to, to um, push back. So when they, when, so when they say, because humans behave in ways that we can often predict. 
So, uh, you know, if you're going into a review, for example, someone's probably going to say, how do you think you went? So if they say this, I will say that. So think about the person that you're, that you're about to go into this conversation with. What are they likely to ask you um, and, or push back on or something? And then what could you say in response to that? So I think this one has a lot of power because we often, we know, we know Gary's going to say blah, 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 blah. And then we go, ah, oh, ha, ha. And then I used to get really, I have a particular Gary I used to get quite frustrated with because he behaved in a way that I just knew he was going to. And then I realized, oh, hang on, I need to flip it. So when Gary says blah, 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 and I go, oh, I am so happy you said that, Gary, because I was hoping that you would say that. I actually thought you would say that. So, and in my response to blah, 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 is yada, yada, yada. So I used to find it fun. I had to change it to be, rather than being annoyed, I would go, oh, that's totally predictable and it's happened and yay. And then I would keep a run sheet of how many times Gary would do that to me. <laughs> so that made it more fun. Um, and then what do you watch at? So I talked about before, um, you know, what's going to happen? So so are people getting louder in the room? What's your personal watch out? You know, do you get um, red in the cheeks? It happens to me. I get really red in the cheeks and I'm getting frustrated. So um, Sarah, who works with me, she'll often talk a lot. And she needs to, you know, we've got little codes that we look out for each other. We look out for what's happening around the room. What's the body language? What's my body language? What's hers? And so then, okay, well, what am I going to do about that? If, if I can feel my face getting hotter, well, maybe something needs to change. And that's when I need to take a break of some kind uh, and mix up the conversation or take a step back and say, oh, okay, whoa, everybody, let's just take a second. Not sure what's happening here, but me, I'm getting a bit stressed. So is everybody else feeling like that? So really exposing it um, so that you can actually be conscious of yourself, but also take some actions when that does come up. Uh, and then the, the next piece I think is really important is to do all of this thinking about their perspective. So what is it that, excuse me, what is it that they might want, need, or be challenged with? So this scares people because I think the blue bit at the bottom here is... Often what is when, when someone comes to me and asks me for something and I don't, I haven't done my preparation. I just haven't because I've just turned up, put the jug on, come into the meeting with my coffee. Ooh, thanks. And so I, what I think is so nice about having gone through these steps at the top is you can be creative. You can problem solve together if you've done your preparation. Now, if you have done their preparation for them as well, that's amazing. It's so good because then, you again, you can have a constructive conversation and say, look, I thought that you might need to build a business case for this. So why don't we talk about how do we get to the next steps? Can we actually be ready for um, building that together? Do we need to have, you know, Mary and, 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 and Suni and, and five other people in a meeting together? So what could that look like? Um, you know, what do you need? What needs to happen? Who needs to be involved? So to just so it starts them. So they're like, oh, I don't know what I'm supposed to do next because I'm not prepared. And so it just makes it so that you're, it's not just about control. It's about your comfort levels, but also making sure that the, the conversation can progress. And you won't always know those things. We're sometimes going into these discussions with information gaps. Uh, and that's what conversation's all about is to make sure that, oh, I don't know the answer to that but I'll go and find out and I'll do some research or can you go and do that for me? And then we'll come back together. Cool? Excellent. Now I do have, um, okay. So now thinking about that, um, is there anything that we could else we could do to prepare to buy the car? Any thoughts on that? I know I've just given you a whole lot of information and there's lots of people writing. So sorry about that. <laughs> um, there, there are other things that we can do you know if we go back to we sort of touched on a lot of things like that but I guess one of the things that predictable patterns of behavior particularly when we're talking about a car a used car salesperson or salesperson of any kind is trained how you know they're very very well trained so so really thinking about okay well what's my counterpoints I, I, I'm a bit of a nutcase when it comes to buying a car I will go on a rainy day uh, close to the end of the financial year and uh, oftentimes on the June long weekend because it's a really good time when their sales numbers are coming to an end. So they're under a lot of pressure to get a sale. Um, I always have my out. It's like, oh, I go at, I, I go at like 
what, 12, 30, 1 o'clock so that I can say, look, you know what, I haven't had lunch, so I'm going to go away and think about that. And they hate that stuff. <laughs> but it's there's little layers and layers of my preparation that means that I can step away from it. So so in any situation, it's really clear for you, important for you to think about how that's going to go. Um, Ruby. <clears throat> Thanks. So last time when I did um, buy a car, because... You know, the car sales are usually just like next to each other. Yes. <laughs> so I went for one. I know I didn't want anything, but I wanted that other person see me that I'm already negotiating. So when I went over to him and I was like, that's what I want. What's the price? Stuff like that. I could say, look, I was just in the neighbor and they offered me a way better price. So I just like leave it then, started walking. And then obviously they gave the car to me for the price I wanted. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so it's like kind of like a trick what I did, but it, it did work. And then that's no, not a trick. No, 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 it's not. I mean, that's part of your research and it's a competitive landscape. They they are beside each other for a reason. So you do Yeah, it. and they're really good because that's their job to negotiate and then you know they know their lower limit, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, so so take the win. Don't don't undermine your win with saying that you're a bit cheeky or, or the words you just used. Yeah. So um, but you know, go. Yeah, I was really good. That was ace. I'm I'm really proud that uh, that you did that. I did that. Beautiful. Thanks. Thank you, Christine. Hello. Um, it makes me uncomfortable, but I do it anyway because I know that, as Ruby mentioned, like they they know how low they can go with their price. So I'll actually say to them, like, I I'll pick like a super low ball number. So like you you had your fifteen thousand dollars or whatever, and I'll be like, do you think you could do that for me for you know, 12 or something like that. So like I um like I, I know it's super low, but at the same time, like it has worked in the past. So yeah. yeah. There's no there's no problem in asking because they are trained in that. It's so important for us to remember. Um, you know, I, I remember I bought a car, my brother is a very good negotiator as well. And um uh we got this great deal and the, the the national sales manager came up to us afterwards and he was like that lady over there she paid full price just so you know to make up for your deal <laughs> good for them yeah, and we said congratulations so yeah. yeah there are a lot of people who don't realize you can negotiate and and what is what how much can you push is mm. what we need to be okay with and that you know you go back to the the personas um you know, if I'm in my adventurer phase and pushing really hard, I'm probably pushing with a trained salesperson. I wouldn't be pushing just with anybody on those types of things. So, so definitely push the boat out. Just, just give it a little go. Just dabble in it and see how, mm. see what comes off. Because if you don't, you'll be like, oh damn, I should have asked. Yeah, and but, I think the worst thing I can do is just come back and say, well, no, the best we can do is this, and it's like, all right, sweet, we'll ask the question. So, yeah, that's it. You asked exactly. Awesome. Mm. Beautiful, thank you. Um, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Marty. Marty? Yes, Mar Marcia. Sorry, there I'm back oh. again. Uh, yes, uh, another. Oh, I'm here with a baby though. Um, another one that um that I do if I can't negotiate further on the money, I throw in other things. Right. So sometimes you 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 really feel that you can't go f further down, but then there's also other opportunities to throw in. So gadgets or things so yeah absolutely for helping yeah someone said like for, about the, yeah what you can get um adding in you know it's service yeah. sort of the big thing we we bought a house for example and they really didn't want to go further down so i just negotiated that they did some repairs on the house right. that cost us otherwise a lot of money so yes things like that yeah, uh, absolutely. And and it's always easy just to say, oh, right, okay. And the service is included in that as well. And so asking a leading question like that, and they're like, oh, what's it going to be? And it's like, oh, it wasn't going to be, but it could be. <laughs> and I am, yes. my, my, my personality is very cheeky. So, you know, I do go with that. So you find what works for you, but, but you know, just be a little bit cheeky sometimes. It pays off. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, great. Thank you, everybody. Um, so uh, we will just go back to the slide sharing. Okay, so um, just one word of warning. So there is a balancing act. So uh, I mentioned Sarah earlier, who I work with. She loves to choreograph everything. Well, she used to love choreographing everything. She likes to be prepared for everything. And that's quite a dangerous thing. Um, and so, and I am someone who loves to wing it. And that's also quite a dangerous thing. Because unfortunately, people are people. 
they will not follow a script that we write. So so being clear that um, we recently had a client who said, oh, I've got this massive negotiation. I've done my prepared cheat sheet. I'm ready to go, but now I'm really nervous. And so uh, she said, what do I do? And I said, put your, put your piece of paper on the floor and then pick up if you had five minutes, if you have 15 minutes, if you have half an hour with this person, what are the three important things? What's the one important thing? Because we can just get to that place where we, we're just overthinking it. So, you know, we want to be able to be creative. We want to problem solve while we're in the room. So, you know, making sure that we're flexible, you know, bullet points is really good as support, um, just not reams and reams of paper, which I, I laugh because I have seen it so many times. And I know I find it really stressful because I'm on the other end. But I also think that it's really important to, um, you know, be able to ebb and flow with the conversation. Um, and, and that's what resilience is all about. You know, that's about being, okay, well, I can be flexible. That's okay. It didn't go the way I thought, but I actually have enough notes here that I know how it's going to go and then um, ad adapt and flex it because the person didn't exactly do what I asked for. Now, if they do go completely off track, then we need to get back onto task or set up a new meeting, but a new conversation. But really um, as the starting point, you know, being flexibly prepared is um, going to help you to feel less stressed. Um, okay, so, oh, there we go. cool. So from here, uh, another poll. So I wanted, to, if you had to go and negotiate to buy that car in an hour, how confident are you that you would get a great outcome? So let's have a little look at that poll. Watching. I'd still try and avoid it. Um, I feel confident or I'm feeling pretty confident. It's in the bag. That's good. Lots of confidence. Excellent, excellent. Pretty confident. Nice. Ambiguous word. Okay, just a few more seconds there. Okay, cool. I'll close that. Um, okay, great news. We've got 43% that are feeling pretty confident. We've got 48 that say, I feel confident. And um, we've got 10 that say, it's in the bag which is awesome. So, you know, we just did an exercise that took such a short amount of time for no one is going to avoid it. Yay. That's so exciting. <laughs> so, so, you know, if you're sitting in this, imagine if you spent a little bit more time doing it, if you spent, you know, um, half an hour, if you did it with your partner, or if you did it with your friend or your mom or your dad or whatnot. So, so see, you can see how such a short amount of time can actually build your confidence in, in um, getting ready to step into any situation. So we're going to talk about um, another brief breakout. So uh, the counter image to the previous one. <laughs> um, so just have a chat to the person that you're in the breakout room that maybe commit to something that you want to do differently in your preparation um, for the negotiation you put in the chat earlier. Um, you know, I think it's really important to, to be as specific as you want to be so that you know, okay, well, I want, I want to go and do that thing. So, you know, do you need to have a deadline on that? I'm going to go and do that thing by this time. Um, and then feel, feel um, free to share any ideas that you have based on your experiences in dealing with situations like that. So I'm going to do something similar to set up the um, the rooms just randomly. So hang on, breakout rooms, here we go. Um, I'll recreate those. So you'll hopefully be in different rooms, but we'll see how my tech capability goes. <laughs> um, and yeah, for, for another five minutes. So we'll see you shortly. Enjoy. Any problems, I'll be here. Hi. Hi, can you hear me, Sam? Hi, how are you? Yeah, your audio's back. That's good. Um, it looked like I was in a room with no no people again. Oh gosh, that's not ideal, is it? Sorry about that. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hang on one sec. Let me find why, where you are on the list. Da, 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 da. I don't know why it's saying that. Oh, I'll put you in room two. So how do I do that from here? Mm -mm -mm. Sorry. <clears throat> it's not coming up which room you were supposed to be in. Did it say what room you were in? Oh, here we go. Now, hang on. I'll move you in with room two. There we go. Okay. Any troubles, just let me know. Okay. Thank you. Beautiful. Welcome back. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, there's still a few rooms <clears throat> chatting away, so we'll just give them a moment. How'd you go, Christine? Pretty good, thanks. Um, I was with Georgia and we kind of found that we had like similar opinion on, on particular things and just how to improve. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, like just being more confident, actually backing our knowledge that we have, um, doing good prep and also like we 
both kind of said that it depends on who else is in the room sometimes as to how far we'll actually be willing to go yeah. um, in terms of like self-belief and sharing knowledge and that sort of thing um, and putting things forward um, yeah. that will kind of be determined by who else is in that environment. So just being confident no matter what could be helpful sometimes moving forward. So yeah, Interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it's funny because often we'll think, oh, that guy's really senior or she's really senior, so I shouldn't say anything. Mm. It's, you know, the, the best ideas can come from any part of the organisation. So I think people want to hear from each other, but we just have to ask ourselves. And there are definitely, I mean, I know, you know, there's been strategies and tactics where I've, you know, not been allowed to speak because that's part of our gameplay. Um, but, yeah, really making sure that, okay, hang on, why am I not saying something isn't isn't what I have to say of value. You know, sometimes, mm. you know, there's some people who just feel air, um, but sometimes, you know, if there's a question that's just rattling around up here, it's like, no, 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 I need to get it out. It's actually a really important question. Um, mm. And I guess the other thing is if you leave that meeting having not asked that question, you know, feel free that to, to follow it up and send, you know, an email or, or you know, grab somebody in the hallway and say, oh, no, there's something that's been rattling around in my brain. I need to share it with somebody. Um, and then what are we going to do about that? So, yeah, so just making sure that you won't always have the confidence and, and feel like it's the appropriate time. Um, but, you know, if it's if it's sitting with you, you know, an hour later, then you should really just get it out. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautiful. Great. Okay, excellent. Well, I hope everyone had a good session um, and have taken, you know, some thoughts about how you're going to move that forward. So um, we've got about 10 minutes left to go. So I'm just going to wrap that and then um, and then open to Q&A. So I'm happy to stay around for a little while as well. So, um, so what is the impact of taking this approach uh, to taking this approach forward um i think it's it's sort of sort of three or four fold so um you know we'll have greater impact when we communicate because we're really clear about what it is that is our message or our story for what for want of a better term um i think it's important to feel more confident to assert your position just like what we're talking about there um you know i have something of value to say i have an important question to ask so I, i'm going to ask that question um and and i think that's part of your preparation is to say oh, okay yeah no that is the one question that i want to leave this um meeting having asked or have this conversation leave this conversation having answered for having the answer for um, you know it will become more and more natural some of this will not feel natural the first time you do it the first 10 times you do it but the more and more and more that you practice it the more and more it will feel like you so don't try and use my words because my words are not your words so I think it's all about doing this your way finding words that you go oh that word ah oh, people really liked it when I asked that question so can I you know use that same question somewhere else or a similar tone of voice or what is it that works with sort of looking for people's reactions but also how it feels on you ah oh, that felt like me that was that was me I'd like someone to have asked me that question that way um you will be able to, uh, to secure better outcomes or know when you need to walk away. So having done your preparation, you know, knowing when you're going to walk away is really important. We talked about it earlier, um, you know, settling for less. Is that okay? Are you okay with that? Making that conscious decision to say, ah, oh, well, I'm actually not okay with that. If I, you know, if I don't get this thing that I asked for, then maybe I need to think, is this the right place for me? And then what will I do? How will I do that? When will I do that by? Rather than just going, oh, well, that just happened. And letting it happen to you so all about being conscious about it uh, and you'll enjoy yourself yay <laughs> i know i love negotiating but i know that not everybody does but if you can start to see yourself as a negotiator then it will be less um, overwhelming it will it will start to spark some joy because you will start to see those repeated patterns of behavior people doing what you expect them to do and then being ready for the response to that that's where the fun is that's where it's actually like oh Great. I really enjoyed myself. Yeah. So over to you to, um, you know, let me know, if, have a think about some questions you might have and, you know, really consider what your, the one word that you had at the beginning, is that still your word? And can that word evolve? And how does that, is that helping you? Um, you know, what's your approach? Um, you know, what's working for you with what you're doing? So often we see people um, just 
want to have a whole new way of doing it. No, I want you to look at where you're doing a really good job already and going, yeah, I nailed that car negotiation. Uh, I, I nailed that conversation, that particular piece of it. I was comfortable with this. I was you know, really uh, okay with that. So, you know, you have more of these uncomfortable conversations and they, and, and they just are part of what you do. Um, and then putting into play the one action that you talked about in the breakout room. So, you know, making sure that it's really clear that I'm going to do this thing by this date. Um, and then when you do sit back and go, yay, I did that by that time. And I felt really good about it. And this is the outcome that I got. So perhaps, you know, reconnect with the person uh, that you met in your breakout rooms and, um, and have a, a, you know, coffee catch up or a Zoom catch up. Um, obviously, stay in touch with me um, after this session um, through LinkedIn or wherever. I'm always here for people to um, ask questions about negotiating certain situations, anything like that. I am in, am in and around AIS quite a bit, so I love it. And we just want more people to feel more confident to negotiate. So thank you for having me, but I'm open to questions. So hit me up, ladies. Let's do this. Abby. I was just going to say thank you. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Thanks. <laughs> Annalise. Hi there. I actually discussed this with in my breakout group, but wanted to ask you. Um, so I come into a lot of um, professional situations, I guess, as a subject matter expert. Um, I'm a CFO, financial governance person, um, and sort of ha and moonlighting and using a lot of that expertise to help support organisations in boards and things. Yeah. So I guess I come into a lot of conversations with a wealth of like 20 plus years of corporate experience. I know I'm seeing, sitting at that table because of my subject matter expertise. Yep. So we were talking with Chantelle because I always feel like I struggle with negotiation and I think it's because I go in there that my outcome is to convince the board that I'm right. Yeah. <laughs> Can you just break me down and tell me what am I doing wrong here? <laughs> oh, that's a big question. <laughs> you want to give me a, 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 an example uh, so that I can uh, put some meat on those bones? <laughs> yes, yeah, so I guess one example is like with one of my sporting organisations that's a registered association, we're about to run the AGM process. Um, I've been through the AGM process with three other sporting organisations in the last 12 months. Yep. I know the timelines. I know when to send things out. I know the rules of the constitution. I've read the constitution. I know the rules of the CAF. I've put a plan together. Yep. And it's like cowboys. Everyone's just doing their own thing. I'm like, but I'm the secretary. I'm the secretary. Mm -hmm. I send out yep. the notification of the AGM. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah, I just... Like I do my evidence, like I research, right? But um, and I know I I have the right skills, and I know what I'm doing is right. Yeah. But right. Everyone else just sort of like I can't convince them to follow what I see is the process. Yeah. Great. Okay. Excellent. Thank you for the context. So yeah, I mean, obviously, without knowing everything, this is you know just general. Yep. Um, but for me, the words that you were using there to convince them, so. What's the role of the board? The, you know, your I guess it's flipping it. So, mm. what does this board want to want to know? What's this? What's the risk appetite for you for for this team? Um, <clears throat> where where are you? You know, what lights you up? What doesn't? You know, where do we go from here? How do I present this in a way that you're hearing me and you know what I think it is, and that we can progress forward? So, so perhaps not convincing them, getting them to a pool model. It's like okay, here I here are the three things that I think. If I as a board member, these are the things I worry about. Obviously, the word risk, ooh, red flag. Um, you know, and, and what are the drivers? So you know, usual board makeup and a lawyer, an accountant, three candlestick makers, and a couple of people who want it for their CV. <laughs> so you know, really thinking about what drives them and what actually gets their attention. The word risk always gets anyone's attention on a board. Um, where where we're going to possibly um, run into trouble later on what are the impacts of making this decision or not doing something like that so so really thinking about the personalities and and, and perhaps stop pushing and go okay right I'm here you've read the report because you said you did and that's your obligation <laughs> from a governance perspective and maybe we should just make this a QA. and a so what are the five questions we have around the group um, about how we pr progress we need to reach a decision today about a and b um, we can possibly put off the others. Does that help? 
Yeah, yeah, I think that's going to really help me for next week's board meeting. Okay, cool, All right. Well, give <laughs> me the chat if you need anything else, if you want to talk about any more details. So. Yeah, thank okay. you. Thank you, cheers. Uh, Helen. Cool, thank you. Um, so I guess my question is probably around um, when it comes to negotiation, I guess my background with it is potentially like a very mild form of conflict where, you know, I feel like I'm asking people to do things that they ne don't necessarily have the time for. So one example is, you know, within a club committee, you want to put something on that's going to have a really good value for, for your club members. Um, but then, you know, the typical thing is, great, you can do it. And it's like, well, actually, I need five or six people to help me and this is what I need them to do. Mm -hmm. um, or it's like, okay, so where do you, who, do you, who do you expect to help you with that? Or people are already busy, you know, like kind of getting them to, you know, they'll say, yep, you can run it. And they might turn up, but they don't necessarily have a buy-in. And so then the picture and the, and the overall experience to get sold to the members isn't really as effective as what you'd like it to be so just trying to bring that around yeah I know I feel that I feel the weight of what your words there Helen <laughs> I think it's about I mean again it's you know I don't know all the circumstances but you know really asking questions around well is this actually important you know do we really want to do this this or this and if we're going to do this one instead of doing three of them then this is what's involved in that so so putting together like a a, a you know, matrix of okay we can do all these things great but that's what's required uh, okay this one the return the potential return is member satisfaction the potential return for this one is member satisfaction and revenue what is our greatest need and this one's going to take 10 people's input we need five volunteers and we need you know three of the staff and whatnot um so, so what is all the need there and then we then making it an informed decision because otherwise it's just going to keep coming back to you um and that's one of those things yeah. where say oh okay hang on a minute if we don't have the time for it then maybe we have the budget for it so do we get an agency an events agency to come in and do that for us so making these decisions so that it's not always you going hey guys I need a hand can I get some volunteers over here it's more like okay we have made a decision that we're going to do this this and this this year these are the only things that we're going to do and every time we do one of those we're going to debrief and work out what worked and what didn't work so that we can set ourselves up for next time to go we're not doing that one again that didn't work and so spreading the ownership of it is probably what I'm trying to say um simply is that yeah. often we'll come back it's like a goalkeeper it's really easy to say oh well you know that's the goalkeeper's problem to keep it out it's Mackenzie's problem to keep it out of the goal it's not there's 10 of you that let it get to Mackenzie so it's everybody's problem yeah. so you know think like Mackenzie <laughs> yeah fair okay thank you no worries good luck <laughs> any other questions Probably got time for one more. Anyone else? No. Beautiful. Okay, ladies. Well, thanks so much. I hope that's helpful. Please take some steps today to build your confidence in negotiating. And uh, yes, if you've got any questions, think of me, think of other side and uh, always happy to help anyone talk about negotiating and um, building your confidence. So I hope that was helpful and practical. So yes. Awesome. Have a good day. Thanks so much.